Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate an Excel calculator that I've created uh, for the purpose of performing chi-square difference tests so that you can uh, compare models or compare multi-level models using Jamovi or SPSS. So before we get started let me note that you will find a link underneath the video description to this uh, Excel file so you can download it and follow along as well as keep it for your own research uh, in the future. Additionally, uh, underneath the video description you'll find a link to the uh, SPSS file containing our data that I'm going to use in this demonstration. Now briefly, the chi-square difference tests are used to test whether there is a significant difference in fit between a full model and a reduced model, where the latter is nested within the former. So in the context of multi-level modeling, this test can be used to test nested models that differ in terms of their fixed effects only when maximum likelihood estimation is used. When re restricted maximum likelihood estimation is used, you can only test differences in nested models that differ in terms of their random variance components. So what you'll see uh, as you kind of scroll down in the calculator, uh, I've got two sections. One is computations based on Jamovi output. The other is computations based on SPSS output. So essentially, Jamovi gives you uh, in its output, it will give you the log likelihood for a model. And the chi-square difference test is actually a test of differences in model deviances. And that is essentially uh, uh, the, uh, using the uh, negative 2 times the log likelihood. So this uh, statistic right here does not appear in Jamovi, uh, but this one does. So, this, so as you put information in for model 1 and 2 on the log likelihood, then those results will show up in the deviances down here. You're also going to need to put in the de degrees of freedom uh, for your reduced model and your full model. For the SPSS output, it gives you the deviance and and the degrees of freedom and so when you put those in right here we can compute our test results. And I went ahead and included um, some cells down here to compute the log likelihood in case you're interested. So basically when you're using these calculators just note that uh, the information you're going to be filling in uh, will be in the white spaces that are provided and then in the remaining uh, yellow spaces you'll find uh, the outputs necessary in order to perform the tests. And let me note too that the way this is set up is for you to uh, put the information in on the reduced model in this first column right here and then the full model or more complete model uh, right here in both of these. Uh, theoretically you could start with the full model and then uh, eliminate parameters and then uh, carry out a chi-square difference test in the opposite direction but we're going to be using more of a build-up strategy where we start with a subset of the full model and so that's how this is laid out. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to start off with the SPSS output um, in uh, testing a couple of models. So here I've got uh, data in, opened up in SPSS. This is from the High School and Beyond survey. Uh, we have a school level identifier and basically we have students nested within schools. So each row represents a student uh, that's uh, nested within a particular school. So this, the level one or student level outcome is going to be math achievement and we're going to use uh, SES, student SES as a predictor in our first model and then we're going to add in a level two predictor which is school size um, in the second models. So uh, what we'll start off with is just by going to analyze mixed models and linear. Uh, I'm going to go and reset this and we're going to move school ID to the subjects box. Uh, we'll click on continue. Uh, we'll go ahead and move math achievement to the dependent variable box and SES to the covariates box. Under fixed effects we're going to move SES over uh, here. Uh, all of this I've, I've kind of dealt with in other videos so I'm just kind of doing this really quickly uh, just to get our, uh, our uh, model results. So I've clicked on include intercept under random effects and I've moved the school ID variable over to the combinations box. Under estimation I'm going to go ahead and click on maximum likelihood because our models are basically going to differ in terms of just the fixed effects. Uh, so I'm going to click on continue right here under statistics, uh, parameter estimates, uh, test for co covariance parameters and then co uh, covariances of random effects right there. So now when I click on OK you'll see in our output we have a table uh, the model dimension table which gives us the number of parameters. So we are estimating a fixed effect for the intercept uh, in the model. We're estimating the slope 
the fixed effect for this slope for uh, socioeconomic status and then we're estimating the variance of the random intercepts so it's this parameter here and then we're also estimating the level one residual variance here so that gives us a total of four parameters that are being estimated for this model now when you look in the information criteria table you'll see that we have the negative two log likelihood so this is the value that we're going to be using in our calculator so what I'll do is go ahead and uh, we know that we have four parameters that are being estimated and just to expedite things and to reduce the likelihood of make, me making errors and typing I'm just going to go ahead and uh, select this and copy it and then we'll paste it into our calculator so I'm going to go to reduce model deviance I'm going to uh, paste that in right there and the degrees of freedom for our reduced model is four uh, that which is given there so our next uh, demo is our next model we are going to add the size predictor so I'm going to go under mixed models linear uh, continue and we'll add in size under covariates we'll add this as a fixed effect and uh, we'll click on continue and then on OK and so now you'll see that we have five parameters that are being estimated so you'll notice again we have the fixed effect for the intercept the slope for SES and now a fixed effect for size we have the uh, variance estimate for the intercepts as well as the level one uh, residual variance uh, being estimated so that's five parameters being estimated again we have our negative two log likelihood uh, that's found in the information criteria table so I'm going to uh, again double click on this and just copy this out and go over to my uh, calculator so we have five degrees of freedom and also uh, there is our deviance statistic so now you'll notice that we have uh, this difference right here this is essentially uh, distributed as chi-square so we have a chi-square uh, value that's given right here and uh, we have one degree of freedom so the p-value that you see right here is 0.29 so what that tells us is that by adding that size predictor uh, we don't see a significant improvement in fit uh, as a result so you know all things being equal you know generally speaking the reduced model is going to fit worse than the full model and so uh, the reduced model you're estimating fewer parameters so it's less complex model so when you add in additional predictors the full model uh, should represent uh, an improvement in fit so if this p-value is, is is not significant that means that the addition of the new parameter estimates um, is not resulting in a significant improvement in fit if that p-value is um, indicating statistical significance then that would mean that uh, the additional parameters are resulting in a significant improvement in fit so now let's look at the Jamovi output so with the Jamovi output we've got what we'll see in the output is a log likelihood uh, what you will not see is the degrees of freedom or the difference so what I've set this I've set this table up so that we can essentially type in the log likelihoods right here and then you'll see the deviances appear here the difference uh, will be uh, computed as well so that, again this will be distributed as chi-square and then we'll have our p-value that's given right there unfortunately Jamovi uh, in the current edition it does not uh, count up the degrees of freedom for you basically the number of parameters which is a little bit aggravating but uh, we can do that really quickly as well so here I've opened up the same data in Jamovi and I'm going to go ahead and just run the first model with SES as the uh, predictor variable so I'm going to go under uh, linear models mixed models um, and uh, we'll move student ID uh, not student ID school ID down to the cluster variables box we're going to move math achievement to the dependent variable box we'll move SES down to the covariates box uh, estimation we're going to stick with maximum likelihood so we're selecting off the restricted maximum likelihood that you see right here so you can see our fixed effects uh, we're going to have uh, SES the slope for SES being estimated as well as the fixed intercept which you see clicked uh, down here uh, next we'll go down and under random effects I'm going to move the intercept over to the random coefficients box um, and if you want the, the likelihood ratio test for that uh, random intercept uh, you can click on that as well so I've discussed this in some other videos but this is just kind of um, a recap of a couple of things that I've discussed previously we'll go ahead and under uh, covariant scaling I'm going to go ahead and set this as none as well uh, just because just to kind of keep it all consistent with what we were doing in SPSS so now looking at our output you can see that we have the log likelihood it says negative uh, 23320.5023 
And so that's the value that we are going to type into our Excel um, uh, file. Now in terms of the number of parameters, like I said, you don't see uh, uh, anything up here in terms of the number of parameters being estimated, but you can see uh, if we go under our parameter estimates table, first of all, our fixed effects, we have the fixed effect for the intercept, that was estimated, as well as for SES, that was estimated. So that's two uh, right there, and then you can also see that we have our level two variance estimate for the intercept so this is it right here and then also our level one residual variance estimated there so now you can see that we have four parameters that are being estimated in this model so going back into our calculator uh, you can see for model one our reduced model I'm going to type in uh, the log likelihood which is negative two three three two zero point five zero two three and then our degrees of freedom is uh, four which you see right there. So you can see that uh, this value, uh, as it appears uh, in our Jamovi output, is the same value that we had when we computed the log likelihood based on SPSS. And you can see the deviance value that is in the Jamovi output is the same as what we had um, seen um, from our SPSS output. So now let's go ahead and do model two in Jamovi. So in this case, we'll go, go back up, and I'm going to move the size variable down to the covariates box, as you can see, and just go ahead and just keeping this all uh, the same as before. Uh, I just went ahead and uncentered the uh, predictor. And so now you can see in terms of our log likelihood, now this is the value that we're going to be working with and for model two. And in terms of the number of predictors, again, we have our, in this case, we've got our intercept, uh, fixed effect for the intercept, for the slope for SES, and then for the slope uh, for size. So those are three parameters estimated, as well as our level two variance estimate and then our level one variance estimate right there. So that's five parameters that are being estimated for this particular model. So now what we'll do is we'll just go up here under uh, model two and we'll go ahead and type in the log likelihood uh, from our Jamovi output, which is negative two, three, three, two, excuse me, uh, negative two, uh, three, three, one, nine, point nine, four, three, six. And also we have five degrees of freedom. And so now you can see right here our difference, our, our um, chi-square uh, uh, value right here is exactly the same as, as within rounding error right there and then you can see our p values are exactly the same uh, again within rounding error so again with our Jamovi output we are going to have the same conclusion which is that uh, through the addition of the size predictor we don't have a significant improvement in fit uh, from our uh, reduced model to our full model Okay, so that pretty well concludes this demonstration, and I appreciate you watching. Once again, check underneath the video description for a link to this calculator, uh, as well as that SPSS data file I was telling you about. Thanks again.